Hey there YouTube, it's your boy B3, back another kicking Tokusatsu review! So I've reviewed shows from Kamen Rider to Ultraman and etc. And I've reviewed movies for this franchise, but never shows, and I don't know why. Power Rangers! Of course, that would be the obvious go-to for an English tokusatsu kaiju channel, but apparently not. <laughs> Uh, today we're not going to start with the original, the most popular, or even my favorite. We're just going to start with the one I watched to completion most recently, which is Power Rangers Turbo. This was the adaption of Car Ranger, which was a weird comedy-like parody Sentai. So it was kind of almost doomed to fail from the start. Because... <laughs> yeah, you take a parody from another culture whose comedy is very different, especially from one decades ago, and uh, it's a little hard to adapt. So, for a lot of this, it's just weird. And lots of people say that Turbo is one of the worst seasons, and it is a bad season, but I don't think it's one of the worst. It's better than Neo Saab and stuff, I think. And, to be honest, it's really only bad until the team switches out. Because there's a point in the series where Tommy and his allies leave the team. Everyone but Justin leaves the team, and they're all replaced with new Rangers. Right? Like, Tommy's replaced with TJ, Cat, <clears throat> and etc. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little gunky. Springtime, you know. And my hair's a little messy because I worked on the farm all day. But, uh... Because for the first half of the show, when it's that team, every one of Divatox's plans is a bomb plot. Hide the bomb, send the monster to distract the rangers while the bomb ticks down. Like, just remote detonate it for Christ's sake, Divatox. And it's just a bomb plot every single episode. And it's boring, it's repetitive, no one liked it. And I feel like that's one reason people think this is one of the worst seasons, because they simply don't finish it. They don't wait till TJ and crew come in. Because once TJ and Ashley and, and Carlos are all rangers, it gets so much better. Like, honestly, I kind of prefer TJ as the Turbo Red Ranger over Tommy. I know it's like heresy in the Power Rangers family to talk shit about Tommy. But let's remember, people, ratings went up after Tommy left, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. Because it becomes a much better show with much more interesting plots and characters. And it's nice to see refreshing new characters as well. I really like TJ, like a lot. And I'm very happy that he carried over, carries over into Power Rangers in space as the Blue Ranger. So, Turbo still has really good practicals. It still has all the puns that I love. It's, this is Also, this is the season where the Red Ranger tells a pizza villain he's going to toss his salad and then gets cooked into a giant pizza. I was waiting for that episode the whole time. I was actually like, I really can't wait for the Toss Your Salad episode, and I really can't wait for the pizza episode. Little did I know they were the same episode. So that was really good. Um, I do want to complain about Justin as a Ranger. Lots of people complain about Justin. One, he grew up to be a bigot. So, that sucks. <laughs> Just hop on his Twitter, people. Actually, don't. Don't support him. But, uh... He's also... Like, he's there so the kids will have someone to relate to. Right? But how are kids gonna relate to him if he's a super genius that skipped several grades and is in high school at, like, the age of 12? Like, he should be in, like, 7th grade, but he's, like at an ambiguous high school level. In fact, he seems to be in the same class as uh, all his friends, and there's no way they're anything less than juniors. So, a little hard to relate to him, right? Because he's still in a school environment that you can't relate to, and etc. So it's basically no different. Right? I don't even have a problem with a Kid Ranger. I mean, ethical problems, maybe, but, like... Story-wise, no. Super Sentai had Child Rangers way before this. Zeo Gold and White Mighty Morphin in the Sentai. Both Child Rangers, if you didn't know. So if we were faithful, we would have already had two Child Rangers. At least. 
So that's it. But Justin's just you. The kids can't relate to Justin, but they also can't look up to Justin because they're the same age. They can look up to the other Rangers, but they can't look up to Justin. That's my problem with Justin. He's not relatable, and you can't look up to him as a kid. And you got to think about these shows from a kid's perspective. I easily can because I absorbed Power Rangers into my being as a child. But as a kid, I only ever watched a few episodes of Turbo. Like, the only episodes of Turbo I can really remember watching uh, are the ones where Bulk and Skull get turned from apes into Invisible, and the, ones where, and the one where the Phantom Ranger was discovered. And those are really the only two Turbo episodes that I remember watching as a kid. Other than the movie. I definitely watched the Turbo movie as a kid, but we've already reviewed that on this channel. And it is canon as a Turbo show. You have to watch the movie first, FYI. Now let's talk about Bulk and Skull. They have had the greatest... Uh, my favorite character development of all time is probably Bulk and Skull. They go from being bullies to junior cops to private detectives to just hardworking men who screw up and are dumb, but they become genuinely good people. And I like that. Let's talk about what they did to Bulk and Skull in Turbo, though. So, for the beginning of Turbo, Bulk and Skull are turned into apes by one of Divatox's cronies, because they witness him doing some stuff at the very beginning of the show. But why not just vaporize them like Andromeda always threatens to do in the next season? Why turn them into apes? It doesn't make sense. Then there are all these gags where they're apes trying to prove that they're human, and it's just stupid. And then they turn from apes to invisible for no reason, with no explanation. And then they turn from invisible back to human with no explanation. Could Bulk and Skull just... Like, could the actors just not be on set so they turned them into apes? Which had to be expensive to get wrangled chimpanzees. And is that why they turned invisible for an episode or two? Because they just couldn't afford the apes anymore and then Bulk and Skull were back? And it's like, at that point, just don't have Bulk and Skull. But when they return, there's actually this good gag of Bulk and Skull where they're, they're working a different job each episode because they can't hold down jobs. And it looks like at the end of the show, they finally get a job they don't lose, which is, uh, like, mail delivery. Which is good. I'm glad they're happy and working. I love Bulk and Skull. They're funny to this very day. Gotta love them. Um, and it is a genuinely good show. Now let's talk about the Special Rangers, because you know you get the main five, but let's talk about the specials. The first one is Blue Centurion who I don't think is really technically a ranger. I'm not even sure they refer to him as a ranger. He's like an intergalactic cop, kind of. Green Lantern style. Then uh, he's stuck on Earth for a little bit, so he's just doing regular cop stuff. And he barely helps the rangers at all, to be completely honest. He's actually not that helpful in most situations, because he's he barely teams up with them. But I do like his suit, and I do like his character, and I very much hope we get a lightning collection figure of him one day. I actually have a figure of his Zord in package over there. I have the X-Ray Robo Racer from the X-Ray Zord's Power Ranger Turbo line. Because uh, I really like uh, the Robo Racer and Blue Centurion. I just think they should have done more. Then you have the Phantom Ranger, who's actually the first instance of a non-Ranger character being made into a Ranger. Because in the Sentai, he's just another hero that exists within the show. The VRV Trooper, which is why it says... Uh, like VRV on the sides of the Zords he gives them, which are really cool Zords. Tur Turbo, all the Zords in Turbo are excellent Zords, I do have to say. Uh, they are all excellent, excellent Zords. Uh, but he's called the Phantom Ranger. And uh, I like him too. He's a little mysterious for no reason. Like he seems to hide things about himself for no reason. And he leaves relatively quickly. But between Phantom Ranger and Roxy, there's no non-Ranger character from the Sentai that was made a Ranger. So, the most recent series is the next one after Turbo, which is from the 90s, to have a non-Ranger character be made a Ranger. Which is very, very interesting. Um, and that's most of what I have to say about Power Rangers Turbo. 
Not my favorite. The first half of the show is just straight up garbage. But the second half, after the cast change, is pretty norm. It's pretty normal. Ends on a big cliffhanger going into Power Rangers in space. You know, would watch again. But, to be completely honest, I'd probably just skip to when TJ and the gang come into the show. Because... The gang, like, the, the characters that carry over from Zio in the Turbo movie, who cares? The episodes are bad. So that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. So remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Next time, we will start with the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and review all three seasons in one episode. So I'll see you all then.